Hey there, what's up? My name is Danny, and today I'm bringing you my first speed paint on some toddler sized Vampirina custom shoes. Please forgive the quality in the beginning. I recorded this over six hours, and I was about halfway through when I realized how blurry the details were and how I was out of shot, <laughs> out of frame for a lot of it. Um, I tried to edit it in the best way I possibly could, but recording and editing has a steep learning curve, so you're gonna have to bear with me. I'm used to manipulating things with my hands, not um, digitally as much. But um, this isn't so much of a tutorial, but I will share some tips and tricks along the way so you can get an idea of my process and maybe try some of it yourself. Um, and as you can see, uh, with the other shoe in the background, I already had this partially painted when I started filming. It didn't really occur to me to try filming it until I started working on the second shoe. And you can see uh, that I've already started with a rough outline uh, with this shoe that I'm working on here with the two figures, which I think they're Bridget and, oh, what's the other girl's name? I can't really remember at the moment. Anyway, you can see the, the rough outline, and what I do is I either freehand it and the and go with that or I use some freezer paper on bare shoe and uh, iron it on because you can take it off and it gives you a nice seal around the edges and that's how I got the white as opposed to the purple um, you can see in the very beginning I started uh, darkening that purple color and that's fabric paint what I do is I put down a layer of fabric paint and then I do my acrylics on top and that seems to hold up really well the, the the fabric paint gives a little more stretch for a shoe so that it's less likely to crack and I, I try and work in thin layers with the acrylics and you can see that I am mixing colors with my brush my <laughs> that is the wrong thing to do do not do that you will ruin your brush but I'm using such little amounts of paint and I, it, it's not a good habit <laughs> it's not a good habit to have but it's something I have done here, but I would not recommend that. You can see it's a, you can kind of see the details. Don't worry. When I get to more detailed things, right now I'm just blocking in colors, giving myself an idea of where things go. I have a visual reference on screen as I'm doing this, but I, I'm not going to include that. That's um, just a picture from the interwebs <laughs> somewhere off of Google I used as a reference. So uh, sometimes I, I, I draw it uh, in pencil first so that I can get an idea of where things go. But I find that I just wind up painting over it. So it's not really helpful. Uh, it's, be it's better for me to f kind of figure it out with paint because it's easier to clean up. Sometimes graphite will get in your paint and tint it and, and it's not fun. You'll see that I have a paper palette with me, and every once in a while you might see my hand fly by with this thing, and it's it's just a little squirt bottle fill, filled with water, and I do that, and I, I squirt my palette to keep my paints wet so that it's easier to mix and so that it can sit there for a long time. Like I said, this was over the course of a few hours. Uh, I was doing other things at the same time. I tend to multitask, which is why it never occurred to me to record this before. So that's why there's a lot of jumping around. And like I said, I was just getting used to recording. So it was uh, a little difficult for me. Uh, next time I think I'll do better. <laughs> this is the first time that I really got a... Uh, I tucked into painting on camera so my hands get in the way and I'm really sorry about that again I figure out my angles at a certain point <laughs> you'll see um, and like I said this isn't really a tutorial because what uh, I, this is just my process and I wanted to show that because a lot of people are curious because I paint shoes a lot thank you for interrupting me I'm going to have to re-record that part or at least crop it out. Anyway, you will, uh, people always ask me about my process. As you can see, I have small chubby hands, but you can see these shoes are really small. These are a toddler size six in the U.S. And these shoes are really small, but I, it's just something I can do and people like to, to know how and I don't really know how to explain it other than I just kind of do it. I can... 
you can tell that I hold my paintbrushes like a pencil and I kind of use it like that. And I want people to be able to see that. Uh, it's, it's a fun thing to do and you can see that I go in layers. Now, first things you want to do is block in your shapes. I think that anybody can paint. I don't think that I was born with a talent. I think I was... Uh, as a child that I was just more into drawing than most people and I just stuck with it and practice is what everybody says and they're right it's just practice I've just had a lot more practice than most people <laughs> it's that's true I just spend way more time on these kinds of things to get to this point I don't think I'm better than anyone else uh, I don't have any kind of innate gift I just I tuck in for six hours and I go and I learn as I go and I, I thought it was important to show my process because I am not perfect when I lay these things down they don't come out perfectly you'll see me fix a lot of mistakes in the very beginning you saw me take out a q-tip I think I just did then too when I get it on the the rubber and uh, as a side note if you do wind up painting shoes and you have a good quality shoe like these are Vans it doesn't quite work as well with, uh, I paint cheaper shoes as well, like Walmart brand. And it, it depends on the quality of the rubber, but you can use some nail polish remover on a Q-tip to get it off the rubber. I found that when I, when I rely on the tape, like if I tape the, the, the rubber down, I wind up, uh, not taping it right every time. I wind up with a bigger mess than if I just left it alone. So anyway, like I said, I make a lot of mistakes and I want to show that. You can see uh, things don't, they, they don't look right at certain points and I just wind up fixing them. It, and that's all it is, is that you have to, you have to be open to making the mistakes and then fi figuring out how to fix them. And I don't always know how to fix them. Sometimes I have to start over. These are actually my second attempt on these shoes. I don't generally have to do shoes more than once but the first ones I was just so out of whack with it that I had to start over and I think that it made them much better I might even include in the end a picture of the original shoe because I haven't painted over it and then these these actually aren't finished they are mostly finished <laughs> I, I just I wanted to show this process I might stream the rest of this these shoes because I'm doing something on the back I'm gonna add a little bit of background detail so it's not just solid purple make it a little more fun because these are toddler shoes and kids like fun shoes um, I think everybody should like fun shoes but kids especially I might add some metallics or some glittery kind of accents but for the most part she just really wanted to see her favorite characters on her shoes and that's what I like to give people so you'll see now, uh, in the beginning I worked with a slightly bigger brush and I like to work with a really tiny brush for details. Um, this isn't, this is, I would call this one of my medium brushes to be honest with you. Uh, people always ask me how I get the tiniest details because I'm the kind of person that will paint freckles on something smaller than this. Um, and I, I tend to joke and say, oh, I pluck an eyelash out and paint with that. But really, I just have a really thin brush, uh, and it's, it's, it, they get messy really quickly. They, they tend to fray because I beat the crap out of them. And I mix colors with my brushes when I shouldn't. I also mix on the canvas, which you quote unquote canvas. It is technically canvas because these are canvas shoes. But anyway, my art instructor in college, that was the thing that he said never to do was never mix your colors on your canvas but he meant more of it will be almost impossible to find the same color again if you don't mix it on your palette first. Uh, for me, when I'm working this small, it's not really that important. I tend to just, you know, I'm done. But it, it, by the, I paint in big chunks. I would, this took me all day. Uh, well, I, like I said, I was working on other things at the same time, but I tend to paint in big chunks. If I have to go back to this, well, I'm going to have to mix the colors all over again and hope I got it right. But I, I probably won't come back to it in uh, in general. I, I tend not to have to come back to it. I tend to get everything out of the way, get it all done uh, in the first sitting. In one sitting, I should say, not in the first sitting. 
Um, that's why I work in sections. Like, you can see that I started the other one, the other shoe first with Vampirina on it, and then, um, I got a little frustrated with it and left it alone. Um, but you can see that I don't really need to mix, uh, the colors back. Her skin tone is particularly an interesting one. And it was a difficult color to mix, but I didn't really have to, I think I did a little bit of it to fix some like highlights and shading, but I didn't have to redo that because I had handled most of the skin tone anyway. So <laughs> you shouldn't mix your colors on your project, <laughs> but I did, it didn't really, it doesn't really hurt me in this situation because like I said, it's not something I have to come back to often, but you know, don't do that. <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do, right? So, uh, anyway, as you can see, I'm working on Bridget here and, and trying to get... I'm still not completely happy with the color of her hair. I don't know if any of you are familiar with this show. It's super cute. But I'm not completely satisfied with the color, but it's close enough. I, I tend to be a stickler for uh, colors, but like I said, th these shoes have kind of been haunting me. I'm holding them right now. I don't know if you can hear me, <laughs> but uh, they've kind of been haunting me and I just wanted to get it done. If I keep going back, that's another tip. Know when to stop because I could paint these for five more weeks. Will I? No, because then I will go even crazier. <laughs> um, as you can see now, like I'm starting to get to a point, I think, I think right around here, I figure out, yeah, now you can kind of see the details a lot better with the camera. I, I have this this webcam, and with my Mac, there's no software that goes with it, so I had to download this other app and whatever. <laughs> Not really interesting. My point is, is that I finally figured out how to get the focus. <laughs> um, so you can see more of the details. Uh, the colors are a little off. But not too much. It I don't think it ruins it or anything. Um, but yeah, so now I'm just painting her face. And it's it's what was uh, very difficult about these characters in particular is that sometimes it's 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 harder to render. The, like these are kind of like a, a it's like a 3D cartoon, like a uh, like a Toy Story, like 3D rendered kind of thing a computer generated so the shading is is interesting the shapes are different I, I'm painting on something flat and it, there's a little bit of translation involved in that but I think it turned out pretty okay there's some rough parts I'm looking at them now and there's some rough parts that I can you know I could tweak a little bit and I probably will but for the most part I think it, it was a uh, it turned out pretty okay pretty good <laughs> and it was a lot of fun even though it was frustrating and I think that they uh, I think that the little girl who they belong to will love them a toddler will not see your mistakes they will only see their favorite character and I will and I will tell you that is that I am rougher on myself than anyone would be on me my dad tells me all the time that <laughs> I don't need to paint the freckles. Nobody notices. But you know what? I notice. See, in the corner right there, that's my little uh, squirt bottle <laughs> of water that keeps my palette wet. But, yeah. So, like I said, I, I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. And I probably don't need the super tiny details. But I personally think that those super tiny details make the piece. I think that they... They just bring it together. Like, how much cooler does she look with the little strands of hair than she did a minute ago? I didn't have to put those in. I mean, I think it's a defining piece of her character. That's something maybe somebody would be like, oh, it's not really important. But the freckles on Anna from Frozen, that's a big part of her character. Maybe nobody will notice. Maybe nobody will actively notice. But I think it, you know, it really adds something. So, yeah, you can see uh, with Bridget that I think I struggled a little bit with her hands here, but I, I kind of had to make up some of it too. I, the hands are so tiny that it was 
Hands are hard to begin with. It's just really hard. Oh, now we're back to Vampirina. <laughs> I must have decided, okay, enough with these two. So we're back to Vampirina, and I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm fixing some of my mistakes that I left. Like, the shape of her eyes wasn't quite right. You'll see later that this is, that I wind up fixing the shape of her face, because that wasn't quite right. The top of her head, not quite right. But it's all about finding your mistakes and fixing them. You just got to get in there. The thing about paint, especially acrylic paint, is you can always paint over it. It's a little more difficult with shoes. You don't want like a really thick layer because they can crack. But um, in general, don't be afraid of painting because you can always paint over it. Uh, especially, like I said, with acrylics. It's you can even paint over black which people are like oh no you know it's so dark I can't do it you can definitely paint over black with acrylics it might take a little bit but you you just have to wait for it to dry otherwise you'll make a mess <laughs> but you can fix your mistakes and that's what I love about paint I think it's actually easier than drawing there's erasers in drawing but for me I tend to make a mess but anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching me speed through this, which <laughs> I think it's amazing that I have condensed six hours of work into 18 minutes <laughs> and I have talked through all of them. But uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my process and I hope that you learned something or at least got some entertainment out of it. Um... I hope you try some new things after watching this, whether you paint your own shoes or you paint uh, a little like canvas bag or, you know, anything. I, I just have fun with it. You know, uh, there's, there's no mistakes, as Bob Ross says, only happy accidents. And if there is a mistake, you can fix it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. And, um... I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.